Hello folks, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video we're going to look at other things that your ICOM 9700 can do. We're going to look at repeater programming and we're going to look at the notch. And we're going to do all of this within a short amount of time. So you probably came here to figure out how to actually program repeaters in. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that you have some repeater and we'll say it's the, I don't know, 147.150. Actually, we'll do something low band. How about a 145.450? Okay, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you have duplex enabled. So open function and look here for the one that has dup. Make sure you're on the correct slash appropriate shift. Now if this is a weird shift repeater, push and hold dup and key it in. And this will tell you what your transmit frequency is going to be. So if it's one of those 1 megahertz offset machines, use this screen here. Now if you want to do this automatically, go into settings. Go to set, go to function, and then scroll down right about here, and then there's auto repeater. You can turn on dup tone. So if you have all repeaters in your area and they all use the same tone, just set the same tone, and then you'll be good. So we'll go back to our imaginary repeater here. And of course, the first thing you want to do is, you know, key up, make sure it works. Of course, I'm on a dummy load, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to hear anything. I apologize for my chair squeaking in the background here. I need to get that dealt with. So go ahead and push the... Uh, dialog here to open up the tone set so if you're on dcs there you go uh if you also have like some other weird configuration where it's transmit tone and receive dcs uh, some mmd vm repeaters have that that i've seen but we're just on tone because this is a basic machine now I'll push and hold the exact same button tone rx css the one that's in the middle bottom and go ahead and dial in the tone frequency that you want so we'll go one uh, i don't know how about 67 now what you need to do is you need to push this right here, kilohertz and MCH. Push and hold that, and then make sure you're on some available memory channel. Now, note here, some of these are occupied, because I have prog programmed in actual repeaters. Go to one that is blank. So we'll go to 7, that one's blank. Now from here, you can write this directly, or the more appropriate way to do this is just disregard whatever you're set to, Go over here, go to memory, scroll down the one you want, push and hold, memory write. Now at this point, you can push and hold this and you can edit name. So we'll say this is W4XYZ. Okay? Now, when I go to memory recall and scroll over, remember you need to be on MCH for this to work, there you go. You can now have this labeled in your thing here. And when you want to get rid of it, memory clear. Boom, now it's gone. Now note here that you're on technically like an invalid uh, frequency here. So push VFOM to go back to your VFO. Of course, you can zero out your counter there if you want it. You can also override the calling frequencies. Now to do uh, the calling frequencies, you see this button over here that's labeled call? That will uh, take you to and from the calling frequencies. But we're not going to use those because we don't particularly really need that. If you're in DV mode, by the way, the calling frequency that you get is a little bit differently, or a different set. And there you go, there's the DV call frequency. And of course, it'll switch modes for you automatically. But we're not here for that. We're here for VFO. So, go back here. Now, let's do something a little bit more advanced. Let's say you're... I really need to fix this chair. Let's say you're operating a satellite, and you know, you got the typical problem. You got all the ditters. You know, they're ditting to try, them, try to find themselves in the downlink pass band. Well, let's say you want to filter some of those out. So we'll go in single sideband, and we'll actually go back to the test frequency that I have assigned here, which is 147-49950. The reason for that is because I have an HT here that has a uh, dummy load cap on it so we can transmit all day and not waste airspace. It's going to produce a nasty dit within the receiver passband. So let's look at what you need to do and all these interesting features. So the first thing you may want to take a look at is the noise reduction. You can tell that helps a good bit. And if I go over to my transmit mic here. This is a test. Testing. Testing. One, two, three. This is a test with noise reduction enabled. And this is a test with noise reduction disabled. Note that it sounds a little bit more overdriven, but it's still relatively okay. Now, you can crank up this noise reduction level if you want. You can push and hold NR to fire up a menu here. And, of course, you can hear that as I do this, completely wipes it out. And now if I talk now, 
Testing, testing. This is a test. Testing one, two, three. You can hear it sounds a little bit distorted, but relatively speaking, it's still okay. But it does sound a lot more muffled than it would otherwise. Probably don't want that. I do apologize for my audio uh, sounding a little bit drifty on here. My 991 Alpha Yaesu that I'm using to transmit is a little bit frequency unstable, and I have not compensated the TCXO for that yet. Okay, so we're going to go back to noise reduction level 4, which is the default that I use, and it's pretty good. And then we're going to look at the noise blinker. Well, there's not really much you can do here. I mean, you can turn on the noise blinker level and the depth and the width that it's going to cancel out for you. So if you have something that's arcing or causing sparks, or maybe you have static crashes or something that are kind of minor, or maybe an old car drives by, there you go. That's, that's the button for you. Now, let's look at the notch. We have an auto notch and a manual notch. We're going to start with the auto notch. And let's hear what the auto notch sounds like when I key up my uh, interference HT here. You hear how it filters that out? It does a very good job of that. Now if I put this thing on ma uh, manual notch, and I can also set the uh, manual notch position just by pushing and holding on that. If we come over to some random place here and I slide around, you can hear how it affects the audio. We'll put this on mid. I always use it on mid. You know, it's that typical uh, fade through effect that you get. Now if I do this, I'm going to place the microphone here onto my desk in front of the radio so you'll be able to hear it. As you can hear, we've completely canceled it out. And now when I talk, it's going to sound a little bit distorted, but it will work. And I will actually need to retune here and redo that because I was slightly off frequency there. You probably want to use a pretty narrow notch. And now when I talk... This is a test, testing, 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 one, two, three. It definitely sounds like there's a little bit of distortion in the audio, but that's because we have a big old notch filter sitting in the way, so that's pretty much to be expected. And there you go. That's basically how you do that. Now, we can also look at the compressor settings as well. So we'll go ahead and push our multifunction knob here, and we'll turn on the compressor, and we'll push and hold it to select the compression level. And here we can control how much compression. So if we're on a compressor level of 5, I'll uh, switch what audio you're hearing, and you can hear the Yesu now. Testing, testing, this is the test. Testing, one, two, three. This is the test of compression level five. Okay, and we crank it up all the way. You know, you can hear the bugs flying on the floor, and it's really assertive in uh, bringing out that feedback. It sounds extremely overdriven, and also take a look at the signal on the transmit waterfall. That is extremely flat topped. I mean, it might as well be uh, like a perfect square of just noise. I mean, you can see how if I just blow in a microphone, how much closer it is. So please do be uh, rather generous in your compressor settings. I leave it on 5, and 5 is more than enough for what I use it for. We'll keep that off here. There is also a monitor function. If I switch my audio again, you'll be able to hear this. I'll turn off that notch. And you can hear what the uh, actual transmitted audio sounds like. This is a IF sampled um, IF. Oh, I'm sorry. It's an IF sampled monitor. So you'll hear exactly what you're going to sound like. I apologize for that noise. That's my uh, HT here picking up the emanations from the dummy load. So I'll, uh, I'll turn that off so we don't have to listen to that anymore. Okay, so now we can also take a look at all the filtering settings that you have. Because maybe you want some narrow filters. Maybe you want to go on 147.5 and you want a extremely narrow passman filter. I'll break out the uh, testing HT here. You know, we're pretty far away from that. If I, of course, go back to filter 1, you'll be able to hear it. Actually, I need to be slightly off frequency in order to be able to hear it. I apologize, because this right here only has uh, that much tuning capability. We'll go back to uh, .5. It's still there. So how do we get rid of this? Well, for one, I always keep this on RF power. You go over here, and you do passman tuning. And this will allow you to do an IF shift. So right away, you know, it gets rid of that. And of course, if I talk, it's going to sound kind of distorted. But nonetheless, you can just kind of barely make out what's being said. It takes a little bit of mental gymnastics to understand what's being said, but it's doable. I'm going to mute this HT. I don't even know why I have the volume turned up on it. <laughs> okay. So this right here will give you your proper IF shift. And you probably want this just to be... Uh, 
set default. Of course, we can crank this back to the default here, but that's where your shifting comes into play. And note we have a custom. You see that little dot on the three? That's how we know it's custom. And such. And if we cycle it over to two, we can bring that back to default. And we go back to one. We can bring that back. Because remember, you're tuning both frequencies of the IF. What you get in and what you get out. It's a little bit complicated to understand, but it's something that you probably just want to mess around with. Now, if you're so inclined to have a custom filter, by all means, you can. Oops. I shouldn't have done that. If you push and hold on fill, you can cycle through them. And if you press BW, you can directly control the bandwidth of it with the main knob. Yes, this has a 50 hertz filtering window. And you can have a hard cutoff or a sharp cutoff. Oops, I uh, untuned away again. And that may be useful to have, uh, especially if you're trying to weed out some interference that's on some adjacent noise source or something like that. Maybe you're on a satellite. Okay, so you've pretty much got the gist of this. There's also receiver and command tuning, but eh, it's not particularly useful. You may just want to use an IF shift in lieu of that. And yes, in all of these you can set. I usually just keep it on RF power just to have a power dial so I can go up to obscene power output and just peak it up with 100 watts and uh, go back down to 5, of course, because we're not heating up our dummy load or wasting our finals. Now, that's pretty much all you need to know. And, of course, we looked at all the uh, scope settings in the last video, and those are probably the more complex settings that you're going to be dealing with is these right here. And also, I will mention there is also over here, there is a... A MOX key, a, a machine-operated uh, transmitter, or a machine-operated relay, and that right there, that right there is if you want to be fancy. Note that this does not work in CW mode. This right here, of course, switches to our call frequencies. This right here engages VOX, so of course we're using VOX. There we go. And now also, if you're in CW mode, and you push and hold, or actually you just push it here, this will control break-in and full break-in. So if we come back over here and look, you can imagine what full break-in does. And yes, you can use up, I'm sorry, down as a CW key. I recommend not using full break-in. It's kind of harsh on your transmitter. I just use normal break-in. Sorry, my timing is horrible using my left hand and my finger on that button there. But you can also push and hold it to control. So there's the break-in cutoff delay. I do it at 7.5 units. And of course, based on your sending speed, it should vary. And get back in uh, sideband. Also, there are some other filter options in FM as well. So if you have... Oh, wow. When my finger's touching on the screen, there's that nasty noise in the audio. I apologize. If you push and hold this, uh, you'll be able to control uh, these options here. And these will allow you to control how much FM bandwidth you have. So if you're operating in narrow band FM mode, this right here is exactly how you set that. Do, do note that if you are operating narrow FM bandwidth, that it could potentially mess up getting into repeaters. And let's look at what I mean by that. If I transmit now, you know, we're just, uh, we're not transmitting with the tone at all. We're just doing it kind of directly. Um, I can tell I have a monitor on there. If we turn on tone and we're in narrow mode, note how narrow that PL tone is. That means it's very quiet and you may actually not get into the repeater. So a good rule of thumb is to just keep it on uh, on filter one. And you can, it's very minor, you have to look really carefully to see it, but it is there and it does make a difference. Or so I found out the hard way. And of course if you're in AM you also have filtering options as well, although I don't know why you would use the filter options on AM, you probably should just leave your filter wide open anyways. And that's pretty much everything you need to know for dealing with memory channels, the filters, passband tuning, and all those other options. In the next video, we're going to look at uh, how to use D-Star and <clears throat> excuse me, also how to use satellite mode. And we'll see you then. Good luck out there, and don't blow up your radio.